Hello, and welcome to another edition of Ask the Professor, where we answer your questions on subjects like history, culture, public policy, why the municipal snowplow puts a wall of hard ice across the end of your driveway, current events, whatever's on your mind. <laughs> well, I had a different question for you, but how about we do two Ask the Professors then? Here's the question. Why do the municipal snowplows put a wall of ice at the end of your driveway? Because there's no competition. They do what's easy for them. They're paid by the city. If you were hiring these people privately, do you think there's one chance in a thousand they wouldn't figure out a way not to do that to you when their competitor was working on a way? What do you mean? That if um, we got together with the neighbors on the same street and decided to hire somebody to clear our street, you think they wouldn't do that? There's, yeah, there's all kinds of ways. In neighborhoods, it can be contracted out at that level. It could be contracted out even citywide, but on a rolling contract where other people have a chance to come in. I mean, they could have one of those little sidewalk guys follow the big plow and push the stuff back out of the driveway. They could lift the blade. They could have a way the blade could scoop it while going across the end of a driveway. There are ways this could be done, but they don't do it because their livelihood doesn't depend upon satisfying you, the consumer. It depends upon satisfying City Hall and on the gamble that we can't fight City Hall, okay, which well. by and large has turned out to be true. All right, let me take the side of City Hall on this one. They have a city with streets that some streets are big, they're not residential. Some streets are small, they're residential. So they have to do the best they can with the, the you know, without spending too, too much money because we get on their case when they spend too much. How can they be efficient if they have 12 different little ways of clearing streets depending on the kind of street they're clearing? Well, that would be like having 12 different kinds of stores selling 12 different kinds of products. And there genuinely are people that go, that's hugely inefficient. It'd be way better if we centralized. We should amalgamate cities. We should have a liquor store monopoly. We should have one public payer for health care. This illusion that these things are more efficient persists, even though experience tells us the opposite. But we start trying that, and we would find the idea of having a monopoly on snowplows as ludicrous as we would find having a monopoly of car makers. Right, so the best way to find... Um, efficient and pleasant for the homeowner's way of, of, of clearing the streets of snow would be to start by de-amalgamating. Oh, absolutely. Municipal amalgamation <laughs> we always get is back a to disaster. That. All right. More on this later. More on this way later, because right now I have a quick question for you. I hope it will be quick. Um, more of an accusation almost. You have been saying for months now, several months, almost a year, that Donald Trump would eventually disappear from the Republican race for president. Why is he still there? Well, the reason he's still there is the reason he's always been there, that he talks about things that other politicians do not talk about, and he does not carefully weigh his words for their public relations qualities and their appeal to carefully labeled and analyzed sectors of the electorate. He actually says what's on his mind. The reason he will not be president is because of what's on his mind. And I'll admit, I've occasionally listened to a Donald Trump speech, and the weird thing is the longer he goes on, the more sense he seems to make. He has these sound bites that really look bad. And it's not that I'm drinking the Kool-Aid or succumbing to the hypnotic effect, but Donald Trump actually is an intelligent person. Unfortunately, he thinks too much that is not intelligent, that is uncivil, and that is incoherent. And what's going to happen, he's going to start running into the Republican primaries, where he's, his appeal will be tested against the seasoned judgment of people who follow politics, who are engaged in politics, and who know what doesn't work in public relations terms, and who know what doesn't work in policy terms. I mean, within limits, obviously. There's a kind of a wisdom of crowds thing here, where the common people are very good at choosing between alternatives, but they're not so great at deciding what the alternatives should be. James Surowiecki's book, The Wisdom of Crowds, by the way, is a must read. And so what's going to happen is that eventually the Republican professionals and the Democratic professionals will figure out who the electorate should be asked to choose between. And I might add, this is not good news for Hillary Clinton. Their radical outsider, Bernie Sanders, is actually doing better in the polls for the primaries and caucuses than he is among the general public. Whereas on the Republican side, Trump is doing better among the general public than he is among those who follow politics more closely. Trust me. Donald Trump will not be the Republican nominee. I'm starting to think it's going to be Ted Cruz, but whoever it is, it won't be Donald Trump because he actually looks like a buffoon for one critical reason. He is a buffoon. And Hillary Clinton, I'm starting to think, may not be the Democratic nominee because she really is unelectable. The problem is Bernie Sanders is really radical. The Democrats are boxed in. Everybody's yammering about Donald Trump. Nobody's noticing. The Democrats have a huge problem with their nominee.
Right, and we should find out about this right now, late, very late January. When do you think that this will start shaking itself down to more reasonable options? Well, they start having the, the primaries and caucuses in February and into March, and suddenly you're going to find out that Donald Trump is not winning these things. And again, part of the thing with Trump is he has this era of infallibility, right? He cannot lose. Wait till he starts losing and then see... People who are frustrated by politics will start listening to what the other candidates have to say because some of them are very frustrated with politics as usual too. Others, of course, are extremely comfortable with it. But there are other insurgents in the Republican Party or other people disgusted with politics as it is currently conducted. Some of them are also part of the problem, but they'll find somebody who has the right mix of qualities and that person will not be named Donald J. Trump. All right. And so by springtime, now that we have all this on the record, if you're wrong, <clears throat> I'll ask you again about it. In the meantime, folks, if you want to play along, look on your screen. There's the URL uh, where you can find all the information about how you can ask your questions of the professor. Thanks and see you next time.